Weight loss can feel like running a marathon that never ends. But unfortunately, it can end sooner than you think, right in your kitchen, on your plate. This is a plate. It contains food. As you strive to reach that finish line, you hop onto the internet in hopes of finding the best diet for weight loss, only to realize there are countless diets and meal plans to choose from. Next, you're either stuck in paralysis by analysis or you jump from plan to plan, unsure of what you're doing because none of it fits you. Well, today we are going to fix this. My diet starts tomorrow. Hello, my dear self, welcome. I'm Marina, a registered dietitian on a mission to help every weight loss warrior out there because I've been there and I know how hard it is to lose the weight and keep it off. I will always be your faithful leader in easy weight loss. One of the hardest parts is creating a meal plan that leads to weight loss, but is also realistic, somewhat easy to follow and ticks all the important nutrition boxes. Today, you will learn how to create the best meal plan for weight loss in five easy and simple steps that do work. And although perfection doesn't exist, this diet has the potential to be the one because if you follow these steps right, it's called a you diet. Me, 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 me. A diet that fits you and the one that you can sustain with the least amount of suffering. So roll up your sleeves and let's go. Before we begin crafting our weight loss meals, let's understand the fundamentals of weight loss. The first and most crucial step is achieving a calorie deficit. Put simply, weight loss will follow if we consume less calories than we use. Research suggests a daily calorie deficit of 300 to 750 calories is commonly recommended for sustainable weight loss. This translates to a 10 to 20% reduction from your total daily energy expenditure for initial weight loss. However, individual needs vary widely, so these numbers can represent a spectrum rather than a fixed values. Achieving a calorie deficit can be approached in various ways. Every weight loss diet in the world, whether explicitly stated or not, depends on that principle. Some diets restrict high calorie foods, others eliminate entire macronutrient groups or specific food categories, while some limit eating windows. However, all weight loss outcomes rely on a calorie deficit. And although calories do count in the weight loss world, it is not necessary to count them to achieve weight loss goals. Instead, we can focus on building a healthy and calorie conscious meals with other strategies. Two main ones that will help you creating weight loss friendly meals are prioritizing certain nutrients and portion control with the help of a healthy plate model and your hands as a serving guide. Let's take the first step. When talking weight loss, we often hear about all the foods we should reduce in our diets. Well, the one nutrient we shouldn't reduce is protein. And even better news, we should increase the amount of protein in our diets as it offers several benefits for weight loss. Firstly, it provides greater satiety compared to carbohydrates or fat, reducing hunger and promoting feelings of fullness, which can naturally decrease calorie intake. Secondly, it stimulates dietary-induced thermogenesis more than other macronutrients, increasing metabolic rate and energy expenditure. Additionally, higher protein intake prevents loss of the lean body mass during weight loss as demonstrated in various clinical trials. So, the first step is all about protein as it helps with weight loss and will determine what kind of mass you will be losing during your weight loss. Not enough protein, more muscle loss leading to harder weight maintenance and worse metabolic health, and more protein, less muscle loss, possibly even more fat loss, and easier weight maintenance phase. Data suggests that we could achieve the benefits of a higher protein diet with intake of protein ranging from 1.2 to 2 grams of protein per kilogram a day. 
you don't need to stress about exact numbers of grams throughout the day or at a specific meal, but make sure to include protein in all of your main meals and even snacks if you'll choose to include them. For protein, I need protein. A good portion of protein in a meal would range from 20 to 40 grams depending on your individual needs. Let's start with creating our weight loss meal based on a healthy plate model. First step will be listing all the protein foods. Animal sources of protein foods include meats, organ meats and meat products, different types of fishes and other seafoods such as shrimps, eggs, milk and dairy products such as yogurt, kefir, cheese and whey protein. Plant sources of protein foods include legumes such as beans and chickpeas, lentils and soybeans, soy products such as tofu, tempeh and edamam, seitan and plant protein powder. Here is what 20 grams of different protein foods look like in terms of quantity. Now go through that list and choose the foods you really like and see yourself eating regularly. Try to focus on low-fat protein sources to get the most protein for the least amount of calories such as lean meats, low-fat dairy products such as low-fat Greek yogurt or cottage cheese, legumes, fish, tofu, etc. What do you think will be your go-to protein foods? Be a good sport and share those good recipes, please! Also, I have a great video on protein food sources if you are looking for more in-depth debate on protein foods. Now, choose your plate, but not the biggest one that looks like a tire, and fill one quarter of your plate with protein food you choose for the meal. Fill that quarter with one to two portions of high protein foods where one portion equals the size of a palm and around 20 grams of protein. We need to add that men will usually need larger portion of protein foods, two or sometimes even more, as they have higher percentage of muscle mass and higher energy needs. Don't cry, my ladies. If we are making a meal that isn't eaten from a plate, we can still estimate portion size with our palm, but the most important thing is to start building our meal with protein foods in mind. Now we filled one quarter of our plate, so let's move on to the next quarter. The next quarter of your plate is reserved for carbs. You heard that right. Hello, Carb City! Contrary to popular belief, you don't need to avoid carbs to lose weight. Hallelujah! Carbs are vital as they serve as the primary energy source for our body and brain and are especially crucial for higher intensity activities. They also play a significant role in cultural and dietary preferences. Studies suggest that moderate carb intake is favorable for overall health. Extreme levels, both high and low, have been associated with increased mortality with the optimal range observed between 50 to 55% carbohydrate intake. Research indicates that weight loss diets inclusive of carbohydrates can be just as effective as those that exclude them, particularly when calories and protein intake are equated. This means that as long as you achieve a calorie deficit and eating enough protein, it doesn't really matter where the rest of your calories come from, either fat or carbs or from moderate amount of both. According to the Institute of Medicine, carbohydrates should make up 45-65% to of total daily calorie needs. However, again, don't stress over these numbers, instead focus on our plate. Step 2 includes listing carbohydrate-rich foods. These include bread, pasta, rice, potatoes, oats, barley, quinoa, buckwheat and others, whereas vegetables and fruits will be covered in Step 3. Opt for whole grain sources whenever possible as they offer higher fiber content. Fiber is beneficial for weight loss as it promotes satiety. While refined carbs like white pasta or rice can be included, be mindful of their lower fiber content. To compensate, pair them with fiber-rich vegetables and fruits. 
Choose your favorite carbohydrate foods from the list and fill the other quarter of your plate with one to two portions of carbs. One portion equals roughly one cupped hand or one clenched fist. Depending on your activity level and starting weight, you can adjust these amounts from meal to meal. However, keep them carbs in their corner as it is easy to go overboard on your mama's favorite pasta. What kind of carbs do you prefer? Do you share my love for all things pasta? Okay, with our quarters filled, let's fill the rest of the plate. Step 3 focuses on fruit and vegetables as they are essential components of a healthy diet. They are low in calories but packed with micronutrients and water, making them excellent choices for adding volume to meals. Their high fiber content also promotes satiety and reduces hunger. It's recommended to aim for at least 5 servings of vegetables and fruits per day. With such a vast variety available, you're bound to find some you enjoy. I am sure you already have some favorites. As our plate is still half empty, we will fill the remaining half with vegetables, fruit or a combination of both. For instance, you could enjoy grilled fish with potatoes and grilled vegetables, adding a piece of fruit to the meal. Alternatively, you can opt for just fruit such as oats with Greek yogurt and berries. One portion is roughly equivalent to one fist-sized serving of vegetables or fruit. Aim to include one to two portions of either or both in each meal. Vegetables and fruits aren't limited to main meals, they can also serve as snacks. I usually tell my clients that there's no limit to how much they can load up on veggies as I've yet to meet the hero who's overeaten raw vegetables. Are you the one? I am the only one, sir. Even if you are, the calorie intake remains relatively low. For example, one kilogram of cucumbers contains approximately 100 to 150 calories similar to a single chocolate chip cookies. Now, let's cry all together and move on to step 4. Lastly, we can't forget about fats. Fats, especially unsaturated fats, are an important part of our diets. They serve as an energy reserve and secondary energy source and they are crucial for our brain, hormone and nerve health. However, fats are also energy dense, packing 9 calories per gram compared to 4 calories per gram for protein and carbohydrates. This means that even small amounts can significantly increase your calorie intake and potentially disrupt your calorie deficit. Some fats aren't hiding. We see them, we smell them, and we love them. Secret junk food time! Foods like fried foods, sweet snacks, and salty snacks are a combination of fats and usually refined carbs such as sugar. We are aware that these foods are high in calories and should be eaten less often and in smaller quantities when trying to lose weight. But some fats hide in plain sight on our plates, making it easy to overconsume them because we are not aware of their energy content. As our healthy plate is already filled, where are the fats? Found them, ate them. Well, they are not directly on the plate, but on the side requiring special attention. The healthy plate model suggests using fats in moderation. Food-based dietary guidelines and other organizations typically recommend one to two portions of fats per meal depending on individual energy needs. To really know how much is this, we'll need to use hands measures as visual guides to keep our fat intake in check and establish appropriate portion sizes for our meals. So, for a step four, we will measure our portion of fats with our fingers handfuls and spoons. A thumb for fats such as peanut butter, olive oil and salad dressings, which is about one tablespoon, and a fingertip for servings of butter, cream and mayonnaise, roughly one teaspoon. 
For fats such as nuts and seed, a suitable serving size is one smaller handful, roughly 20 to 30 grams, and for an avocado, one portion of fats is about half of the fruit. We also need to consider other foods that contribute to the fat content of a meal. Three eggs can represent one portion of fats, more fatty meats or fish can add another portion, and full fat dairy is yet another. So it is wise to swap some of these full fat versions with leaner ones to save on calories from those extra fats. This certainly doesn't mean avoiding salmon and tossing egg yolks, but opting for low-fat Greek yogurt and low-fat cheeses instead of full-fat versions and choosing leaner meat cuts, legumes or tofu when possible. Now for the last list. Here is a list of all the foods in the fat category. Choose the ones you like, but pay attention to the unsaturated options as they are more heart-friendly. On to the final step, but before we address it, let's mention briefly indulgent foods. I don't eat any of that. Rigid diets that completely eliminate high sugar, high calorie and high fat foods can lead to worse long-term results compared to more flexible ones. It's important to enjoy these treats in moderation to avoid feelings of depression. Incorporate one to two treats per week and savor them mindfully. This balanced approach can help maintain your diet in the long run without feeling too restricted. Step 5 involves deciding on number of meals per day. When it comes to weight loss, the optimal number of meals per day is a highly controversial topic. A decade ago, people believed that you had to eat at least five small meals a day to keep your metabolism running. Today, there is a whole cult of intermittent fasters who propose that you should skip breakfast to lose weight and live to 200. He's a vampire. As usual, the truth lies somewhere in between and is with many areas of nutritional science, there is no universal consensus regarding the effects of meal frequency on body weight. The most important thing to remember is how much you eat and what you eat is far more important than how many times a day you eat and when. When we look at the nutrition hierarchy of weight loss, meal frequency and timing are not the most critical factors to focus on as they don't affect energy balance and calorie deficit directly. More frequent meals won't drastically change your metabolic rate or promote greater weight loss compared to less frequent meals when equated for calories. Similarly, less frequent meals won't put you into starvation mode. But I'm starving! For some people, more frequent meals, 5 to 6 a day, can decrease hunger and improve appetite control. Other people function best with fewer meals. We also can't forget about intermittent fasting, or as I like to call it, sleeping in and skipping breakfast. All jokes aside, it's a valid tool for helping with the calorie deficit by compressing the eating period, but its effectiveness hinges on avoiding overeating during the eating window. Some people find it easier to adhere to intermittent fasting as they aren't hungry in the morning or they like to eat a bit bigger portions, not worrying about spreading calories throughout the day. But even when practicing intermittent fasting, it's still wise to have at least two to three meals during the eating window as it's really challenging to compress all the needed nutrition, especially protein, into one meal without at least mildly overeating. Because for most people with weight problem, portion control is a good practice to practice. Meanwhile, practice, practice. We will talk about meal timing another day, but as for how many meals a day, it's up to you. Food-based dietary guidelines propose eating three to five times a day with three main meals and optional one to two snacks, which aligns with the traditional three meal per day pattern common throughout the industrialized world. 
You could opt for three main meals and one to two snacks with a protein and fiber combo, such as protein shake, cottage cheese and a piece of fruit, or a more substantial snack if you need more energy that day, like adding a source of carbs or fats. Remember, the calorie deficit number can be a spectrum, so some days could be lower or higher than others because the name of the game is marathon and not a sprint. Yes, I am. My advice on the number of meals? The most optimal number is the number you can actually stick to without suffering too much and that you can follow 80% of the time over the long term. This means you are not hangry all the time and you don't overeat at meal times because you've skipped some meals and now you could eat your husband. Also, eat when you are hungry, but try to recognize if it's actual hunger or just boredom or something else and stop when you're 80% full. Eat your first meal when you are moderately hungry and not ravenous and your last meal two to three hours before going to bed to avoid reflux issues and evening snacking. Take time to prepare and eat your meals in peace and not in front of a screen unless you are subscribing to my channel. Thank you. And there you have it, my dears. These five steps are all you need to create a perfect meal plan for your weight loss journey. Remember, it has to have your signature because you will be the one to eat it. Don't rush the process and don't chase perfection. A balanced diet includes all food categories, so try to adopt the 80-20 approach where 80% of your meals resemble the healthy plate we've just created and reserve other 20% for some tasty indulgences in moderate portions. Aim for variety and prepare your meal plan in advance. Pick your recipes, add flavors and spices to your liking, and remember to tweak recipes if needed to be conscious of the energy content of the meal. Take the time to do the shopping with help from our list of foods, and don't go shopping hungry as the cookies will literally fly into your cart. Schedule your meal prep time so you can prepare meals in advance, but even if you are in a rush, you can still create a healthy plate with a can of tuna, piece of tomato, and a slice of whole grain bread. And finally, remember, patience and consistency are the foundation of long-term weight management. So take it day by day. To make it come. Thumbs up and fists clenched for your weight loss journey, my dear. If you found this video helpful, your like, comment, and subscription will be greatly appreciated. Thank you again for watching and see you soon. Bye!